So Michael Cohen, this guy right here, is one of Donald Trump's lawyers. And it turns out in court proceedings, we learned that he's also Sean Hannity's lawyer. Now, they were trying to hide that fact. And um, there's been a lot of speculation, I think merited speculation, about how Cohen's a lawyer, but really he's what's called a fixer. So kind of like a sleazy, unscrupulous kind of lawyer who his, he really exists to clean up the mess that's made by rich people and elites. And so, you know, Donald Trump with his numerous affairs, you talk to Michael, uh, Michael Cohen, he's the go-between between, between you know, him and Stormy Daniels, or him and Karen McDougal, or him, and now there's speculation that Trump literally has a love child, that I think he had sex with, I don't know if it was the nanny or something, and they had a kid, but he, he kept it on the low, and now there's, there's stories of that happening. Um, so he's the guy who cleans up your mess. That's his whole purpose. He's a lawyer, but really he's, you know, he's doing the dirty work, if you will. So they try to hide the fact he's Sean, Sean Hannity's lawyer also, but that came out in court proceedings. So this is a big deal for a variety of reasons. I mean, the most important reason is that Hannity has been talking about all these issues involving Trump and Cohen and giving his opinion and presenting it as, you know, like he's being a journalist, but he didn't disclose his massive conflict of interest. Now, you and I might shrug at that and go, well, come on, he's Sean Hannity, Fox News comes as advertised, and they're super far right wing. But that's the thing, they don't come as advertised because they say fair and balanced, and they're not fair and balanced. And if you're going to pretend like you're, you know, um, Mr. Straight Shooter, you have to m disclose the fact that you're defending the guy who's cleaning up your messes. So, but he doesn't do it, and he doesn't do it because he's a fucking slime ball. Sean Hannity's a goddamn slime ball. Now, again, I don't even think I'd be doing this segment if the facts were just as I laid them out thus far. But there's an extra thing that I went, you know what? Fuck you. Now I'm covering it. Why am I covering it? Because Sean Hannity had the nerve to go after other people for conflicts of interest and not disclosing certain things. And then a guy who does that and then now is like, what, what do you mean? No, disclosure? Conflict of interest? Me? What? It's just like you're... I don't know how these guys sleep at night. So anyway, here's a compilation of what Sean Hannity used to say uh, when other people were caught with a conflict of interest and what he says now that he's caught in one. And this is a Fox News alert, a major scandal developing tonight surrounding ABC News chief anchor George Stephanopoulos, who was forced to apologize earlier today over a huge conflict of interest after it was revealed that he donated $75,000 to the Clinton Foundation from 2012 to 2014. Was the greatest humanitarian in the history of mankind, ABC News chief anchor George Stephanopoulos, under fire tonight for failing to disclose that he donated $75,000 to the Clinton Foundation, apologizing yet again and for not disclosing that he donated tens of thousands of dollars to the Clinton Foundation. Now, while this is shocking, it shouldn't be surprising. He didn't think to disclose this. I don't buy it for one minute. He didn't disclose this. He's, he's such a hack. I mean, how could he possibly have not known that he should reveal this? Do you believe that? It's what should so happen to him? Should George Stephanopoulos be punished by ABC News? And if so, what should that punishment be? And what do you want from ABC? What would you like them to do? Because they said they're not going to reprimand him. And my question that I want answered, is he coordinating with the Democratic Party? I should have taken the extra step of personally disclosing my donations to my employer and the viewers on air during the recent stories about the foundation. I apologize. Gee, George, you think? <laughs> All right, there's been all kinds of wild speculation from the mainstream media today about me and President Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohn, after my name was mentioned in court proceedings earlier today. My discussions with Michael Cohn never rose to any level that I needed to tell anyone uh, that I was asking him questions. You I have the reveal. right to privacy. Right. I but, do. You know, Such a minor relationship in terms you of... You should have said So now he's just trying to wiggle out of it. He's like, no, well, see, what had happened was this news broke when he was on his radio show and he came back from break and he was like, well, you see, what had happened was uh, the sun was in my eyes and Craig and them met down by the Winko and um, I didn't really know what 
new phone who this <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to wiggle out of it by saying he wasn't my lawyer i well i gave he gave me a, a, opinions on some see i hadn't i i only gave him like 5 or 10 dollars and he told me about real estate he's such a sleazy liar. Now listen, let me be clear about something. I'm not going after, oh, just because he's Sean Hannity, I'm going to go after him because he's a Republican and I disagree with Republicans. No, because I actually agree with everything he said about George Stephanopoulos. If George Stephanopoulos is donating tremendous amounts of money to the Clinton Foundation and not disclosing that as he covers fucking Hillary Clinton in a race, then yes, he's a scumbag too. And he's a sleazy liar too. And you have to disclose those conflicts of interest. Absolutely. So I actually agree with everything he said on that, but it all applies to Sean Hannity too. But he thinks I'm above it. It doesn't count. Hypocrisy isn't a thing because I'm me. So I get to override it because I'm special. That's how these guys think, man. They don't have that thing in their brain that even senses the existence of a concept like hypocrisy. So it's just, it is so frustrating. I'll never forget when... You know, the thing that was like the most eye-opening for me about a guy like Sean Hannity, remember when, so back during the Bush administration, he would nonstop defend warrantless wiretapping and the Patriot Act. And he would act like, this is what we need to do to keep the country safe. And he would lambast Democrats and act like, oh, you're against warrantless uh, wiretapping and spying on everybody in the country? Well, then I guess you don't want to keep America safe. He would use these arguments. He would say that. Like, oh, you want the country to get attacked because you're against fucking the NSA taking everybody's information. That's what he said under Bush. When it, Obama was doing the same thing. And then we learned that it was still going on. All of a sudden, Mr. We need this to protect the country. All of a sudden, he was like, this is clearly against the Fourth Amendment and your right to privacy and the government shouldn't be able to warrantlessly spy on you, my god, why I never, sir, like that's, so that sheer partisan hackery, under Bush, the program is wonderful, it's great, it keeps us safe, under Obama, oh my god, our privacy, the constitution, have you no decency, sir, so it, it's shameless partisan hackery, that's all it is, if, if the Democrats do it, it's wrong, it's evil, it's bad. If I do it, it doesn't matter. It's the exact same thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Rules don't apply to us. So I just want him to know he's a proven fraud and he's a sleazy liar. And there was never a, a funnier line ever uttered in human history than when the words came out of Sean Hannity's mouth, quote, he's such a hack. We know that you're against the NSA data mining. We know that you're against the NSA surveillance program. So the question is, where does the Democratic Party, what will you do if you're elected to power to make our country safer in the war on terror? Specifically, what, do your, what will your party support? Your party brags about killing the Patriot Act. You don't want the NSA surveillance. You don't want data mining. Yes. We have Pat Leahy saying that he doesn't want a, a NSA surveillance program. Nancy Pelosi, the woman who'd love to be speaker. She's against the NSA surveillance program. Yeah, she, sure. You mentioned that, and you mentioned the very specific things, the Patriot Act, the NSA surveillance program. The party that's weak on national defense, that doesn't want the Patriot Act, the NSA program, the data mining program. Is it right to say that, the, for example, on issues involving national security, be it the NSA surveillance program, the data mining program, the Patriot Act, Guantanamo Bay, that Democrats are weak on issues involving national security. When our techniques are working, we've got the NSA program here, we've got the Patriot Act program here. You know, in light of this, how close this was, I, I, it's staggering to me that we're even debating the use of these techniques in this country even at this time. Big Brother is monitoring your every move, whether it be online or on the telephone. Let's talk about why this story, why is this important to you? Number one, this is America, and as law-abiding American citizens, you have a right to privacy. Number two, these actions by the Obama administration are clear, very clear violation of the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unreasonable search and seizure. Number three, 
the Constitution. It is our rule of law. If we do not respect and honor the Constitution, then anarchy and tyranny will there follow.